This week we're heading to the track to put the Racecraft Toyota 86 through its paces and spoiler alert, didn't really quite go to plan. As you can see, front doesn't quite look how it used to. Let's find out how it all unfolded. We're here at Highlands Motorsport Park for round four of the Highlands Sprint Series and uh, it's cold, it's really cold. So safe to say, I don't think the car's gonna be overheating today, which is good, not that that's actually a problem we've really had. One of the problems we're going to have today is getting heat into the tires. We we're here yesterday cutting some laps and practice and doing some racecraft filming, and man, it was hard to get those slicks up to temperature. Even after four or five hard laps, we still really couldn't get the slicks working. And given that this race is uh, six lap sprint races, yeah, don't know how well we're going to be going there, but uh, looking forward to it. It's been a little while with COVID since we've actually managed to get to a racetrack, so I had to come down yesterday and just uh, familiarise myself with which way to turn when I come out of pit lane, make sure I know uh, which way the track goes. So I think we've got that nailed. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to see where we end up. There's four groups racing today, obviously split among lap times. Last time we were here I qualified P1 in Group 2 which has a 120 cutoff. so uh, that's the sort of breakout, go faster than that you're up to Group 1. Group 1 for us not that competitive, we'll be racing against a couple of uh, GT4 570S McLarens and I can tell you the little Toyota 86 does not stand a chance as you'd expect. So last time we were right at the front of Group 2 hoping for something similar there but but we'll just see what the track does and how much grip's available. I'm suspecting maybe not that much. What do you think about today? Yeah, we'll be fine. Still concerned about the uh, temps? No. No. Just have to do a huge burnout to get them up. <laughs> uh, the radio in it. Even if only we're down the front straight, that's probably yeah, enough. Yeah. I'm not that when chatty on the there. radio. In um, a potentially small oversight, turns out I forgot to bring an ethernet cable which makes it pretty hard to do almost anything. The dash and the ECU both use ethernet to communicate. But that's okay, called in a favor from a friend and he's uh, just dropped this in. Uh, I think this might be the world's longest ethernet cable. We're thinking at this stage what we might be able to do is just leave this plugged into the car, leave a laptop on pit wall and I um, guess we'll call it poor man's telemetry. But either way, it gets us out of a bind. We're just getting ready to go out on our first practice session. We put 25 psi all around in the tires. Hopefully, they'll come up to temperature. It's minus two at the moment. Um, might be a bit optimistic, but we'll get Andre in there and see if he can at least bring him up temperature. We can check him when he comes back in after practice session and alter him if they need it. Other than that, the car is all carno weighted, all the suspension setup seems to be dialed in. He's just gonna go out and test it and see how it goes. We just had our first session there which was a 30 minute practice and qualifying session. I've actually called it a little bit early. Uh, first of all the track, incredibly cold, no big surprise, I still can't actually feel my feet. Like I don't need to rely on those too much. Uh, anyway, got out there, did a few laps just really slowly, uh, letting everything come up to temperature. Uh, you could see how much the traction control was cutting in just because of the lack of grip. Uh, once the tyres started to come up to temperature, it was actually better than I expected. Managed to push on for a few laps, but it was quite difficult to find a gap in the traffic. There's quite a mix of car speed there. There's a couple of Porsches that we were probably a little bit slower than, then a couple of Hondas and a Toyota Starlet that we were much faster than. So just really does get a little difficult on a qualifying lap trying to slot in and sequence with the other traffic so you don't end up getting uh, sort of hampered when you're on a flying lap. Uh, anyway, called it quits early because we've got a problem with the brakes. I'm not actually sure what it is. Never had this before, but basically ended up getting a long pedal. It got worse over the session to the point where I actually didn't think I was going to get it stopped coming up to the forest hairpin. So I uh, wasn't a lot left to learn uh, by continuing to pound around the track and uh, only really risked uh, binning it. So we'll at least bleed the brakes and have a look and see if we can find a reason for that problem. Uh, but I think I did a uh, minute 21. There's 
is a minute 20 breakout as I mentioned so probably at least in the top half of my class so happy days. I'm just warming up with the steering wheel. Oh it's pretty warm. Here. Yeah oh. it's not bad eh. Yeah, the fog's set back in so she's, she's getting a bit cold. It's going to be a bit slippery out there so we'll see how Andre goes in the meantime. Me and Scott are just uh, getting over our frostbite. We're just, we're just out here getting the candid shots of Andre. One rear photo oh. of Andre smiling. He's smiling, look oh. at him! Oh. Can we like do a transi transition and be like cut to the action and then be like... <laughs> so uh, we'll cut to the action now. Or we'll just go shoop like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, cut to the action this time. Andre's coming sixth. He uh, he's lost two places. Here he comes. Three, two, one. Yeah. It's so hard to get. We just saw Andre Dude, and uh, the front of the car is not looking too good. He's coming into the pits now and we'll see what happens. Oh. That's a lot of damage! down into fourth and for some reason I got sixth I noticed as soon as I went through the corner so I pulled it out of sixth put it into fourth got second compression lock game over just a passenger didn't even have time to react so you had this side of the bridge you ran yeah, under bridge side. This way, side, I thought for a second I was gonna miss it but unfortunate end to the race. Uh, not really the way you want it to go, eh? That was the only working race car. Now, now, now no, this happens. Not. It's all fixable. Brandon reckons it's all fixable because he's he's just a genius. So, uh, 
You get branded on the job, should be whipped up in a, in a couple of weeks. Okay. Wait, Rob, the tow hook clean up. Uh, the lucky thing is we just finished fi filming our corner waiting course yesterday, so uh... <laughs> yeah, can't, so uh... Can't, uh, can't shoot that B-roll again. So we can't shoot that uh, anymore, but we don't need it because we finished yesterday. We'll go get Ben, uh, see what he reckons, eh? I don't know if he's seen it or not, but yeah. So we're like one, two, three, four, five flat lights. Yeah. Two sweet flat lights. Yeah. Oh, it's only one, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. I don't think Ben knows because he seems like he's inside. So we're going to be the bearer of bad news. Were you uh, watching oh, the race? Oh, what's up? Yeah, I did. Did you see what happened? Yeah. Yeah. I wish he could finish a race. Yeah. Does yeah. he have an excuse? I mean, a reason. <laughs> uh, so apparently he... I uh, went to downshift into fourth and hit sixth instead, and then so we now six try to hit fourth and hit second. Compression lock spun into the bridge. Uh, I, I've done the compression lock thing in that car. Yeah, it's easy to do. Yeah, so he's a bit gutted, but um, I bet you he's a bit gutted. Says uh, he feels alright. It, it, like, it was more of a glancing, him up. Yeah. glancing blow. It sounded like great. I was like, oh shit, someone's having a messy spot, and I couldn't quite see like over the bridge, and then. Oh, I didn't poor even little, hear it. Poor little racecraft car just like yeah. tutuing out of the bridge. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. that's ours. Smash right where the oil cool was too. So just oh. What do you reckon, Barry? Fixable? I reckon, yeah, hundred percent. Maybe not today. No, but I guess it is. So got some bits for the wall. That's the track lapse timer. She's she in half. This is uh, the tow hook. Which uh, you don't want snapping. So once this race starts, um, we can get the GoPro back. Uh, the marshal said it is in two pieces. Um, she's a bit of a shame, but she has mounted right down on the front bumper. So I didn't really have high hopes, to be honest, um, after that hit. So, but he said he saw the memory card in there. So that's all we really want out of that. So we can show you guys the footage. Um, Sage car's coming in soon, so we'll then, then we'll get it off him. Uh, do you have a broken GoPro? The guys I do. You do? Okay, cool. There's not much left of it. But yeah, yeah, as long as the memory card's intact, that's, uh, I'll be glad. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, all right, thanks for that. Cheers, man. <laughs> so, this is what's left of our GoPro. Uh, this bit here. Not too good, but the memory card looks cracked, so hopefully that's salvageable. If it is salvageable, you see it. Right now. Race one. <laughs> let's um let's consider how race one went. Um, it started well. I was in sixth position on the grid. There's two classes, so I was P1 for class two. That put me in grid position six. So kind of mid-pack, rolling start. Got a great start. The first lap, there was just no grip there. It's impossible to get heat into the tyres on the formation lap. So I was purposely taking it pretty easy, as was everyone else. As you saw a GT4 McLaren spin coming out of the pits on that formation lap, just to show you how slippery it was. Anyway, it settled into a bit of a rhythm and basically ended up in uh, position six, I think. That's pretty much where I was holding. So pretty happy. Three laps in, everything was going pretty well. Starting to get a little bit of heat into the tyres. So I was getting a bit of confidence and um, yeah, so it was the fourth lap where, um, well I guess you'd have to say things kind of came well and truly unstuck. It's not ideal. Actually in probably 18, 20 years of motorsport, this is the first accident I've been involved with. And I'm going to put my hand up. It was completely 100% driver error and it actually wasn't even a case of pushing too fast it wasn't because the track was slippery it wasn't because there was no heat in the tires the problem was coming onto the bridge I'm in fifth gear coming into the braking zone coming into the bridge I switched from fifth shift down into fourth that's what I've done every lap 
after that only I shifted into sixth yes I know idiot but but it gets much worse than that noticing straight away that I'd gone into sixth because I had no power I had a car not too far behind me so obviously wasn't too keen on letting him gain on me so I casually put it from sixth gear back into fourth this is where things went from bad to really ugly instead of fourth I managed to get second gear so what this does is instantly compression locks the back of the car I'm entering the bridge concrete walls on both sides at that point unfortunately I'm a passenger uh, all things considered I actually got off pretty damn lightly that bridge has claimed a number of victims and while right now everything looks pretty bad at a cursory glance the chassis rails are still straight and pretty much everything that is damaged at the moment bolts off the car so it's pretty lucky and I kind of thought as I spun around that would clip the rear of the car that got off uh, completely unscathed so a small miracle there that it wasn't much worse than it was now ultimately you might be thinking to yourself Racecraft a company that specializes in teaching people how to drive and optimize their car fair enough fortunately I'm not the one who's going to be doing the driver trading so fear not we're bringing in an actual pro for this I've never been anything more than a weekend warrior and I'm quite happy to admit that obviously at this point though the pride has taken a fair beating it is complete stupidity complete driver error inexcusable the only thing I will claim is I have spent most of last season racing a car with a sequential so maybe that's what we need to do to this pretty hard to miss shift with a sequential gearbox anyway that's our day done so pretty disappointing into the day it was looking so good but I've been in this position before so maybe the Highland Sprint Series just isn't for me Uh, so we're back at the workshop uh, we're analyzing what went wrong and it appears at this stage from a cursory examination that the front fell off which the front definitely should not fall off uh, we've got some work ahead of ourselves to be fair though on the plus side it's actually not as bad as it looked it looked a lot worse at the track and most of the stuff that's damaged is the bolt-on gear front bumper the crash bar crash bar did its job uh, probably a hint in the name I guess let's have a quick look all right so we've got everything stripped away obviously as you can see the oil cooler had a hole in it I was kind of thinking that that was likely to be the case uh, while I was recovering from that spin and one of the first things I looked at was whether I had an oil pressure warning on the dash and I didn't I knew there was a lot of fast cars coming up behind me so one of my key drives was to get off the track uh, still had no oil pressure warning nothing else was going on so because I was so close to pit entry decided to head back to the pits let's carry on and see what else we've got uh, obviously the radiator has seen better days this little cooler here this is actually a cooler for the water supply to the turbo long story there but we we're having cooling problems with the engine so that was put in place didn't quite get back to the engine so everything's looking good there the other part which is a little hard to see the crash bar bolts on here chassis rail directly behind this Got another one over here it looks like the chassis rails have not been damaged down here we've got the right hand side headlight toast that is not coming back this is the crash bar again doing its job it is very aptly named it's looking a bit the worse for wear uh, the intercooler actually probably could be all right uh, it's taken a little bit of a hammering to the fins but nothing that suggests it's got a hole in it but uh, we'll be checking on that anyway a few other ugly bits over here obviously the front bar you've already seen that took a fair decent hammering number plate looking a bit second hand airbox with a hole in it airbox and multiple pieces uh, that's about it probably the worst part of this whole deal is the GoPro that was on the front lip of the front bar which uh, we're pretty confident would have had some epic footage on it 
and uh, we did a little bit of careful dissection, a little bit of surgery, getting the SD card out of the GoPro. She's toast. No one home, so that's that's a bit of a shame. Now, at this point, we'll probably end up getting a panel beater to put it uh, on a jig and actually check the chassis, make sure it hasn't been tweaked. Uh, nothing worse than putting a car back together and finding that the chassis's bent. So we'll be checking on that, but so far, everything is looking like we got off about as lightly as you can for uh, a reasonably decent shunt. If you enjoyed that episode, then give us a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions on my H pattern and competence, feel free to ask. I'll answer them in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please make sure you do so. This will make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Next week, we're going to give you an update on our FD RX7 project car. Project Glacier, that's about how slow this project's been coming along. However, we're right on the verge of the first startup. Place your bets now, will it break?